Hi, I'm Dr. Tam Cummings and I'm a gerontologist who specializes in dementia. Today, for the purposes of your learning, we're going to talk about the nine most common forms of dementia. And the reason is these nine dementias constitute 99% of all the dementias. If you understand these nine dementias, you can simply remove the ones that cannot be your loved ones and it allows you to go back to your physician with a lot of information about which one of these remaining dementias does my loved one have. The largest of the dementias is now mixed dementia. Originally, mixed dementia meant that we were talking about a combination of Alzheimer's disease and or vascular dementia, but those two together. It could have started that it was Alzheimer's disease and then because of a vascular condition, vascular dementia developed as well. Or it could be that your loved one had vascular dementia and lived long enough that Alzheimer's would join. Today, mixed dementia means that we understand it can be a variety of different dementias, not simply Alzheimer's and vascular. Recent research from Europe in some autopsy reports showed that more than half of the people autopsied actually had more than two dementias, more than three dementias, and a large number of them actually had four or more dementias. What this means for you, the family member, is if you're seeing one set of behaviors that make you very clearly believe this is an Alzheimer's form of dementia, but then you also see this other strange stuff that makes you think another dementia is present, let your physician know because there's a good possibility that your loved one is having more than one form of dementia. And regardless of the forms, the term that would be used with you is the term mixed dementia, meaning that there is a mixture of more than one dementia. The next form of dementias, this is a brain with mixed dementia. You can see the two arrows that are pointing to white areas in the, in the brain which are indicating where strokes had occurred. If you look closely at this slide, there are 54 TIAs or transient ischemic attacks in this brain. This person had strokes that occurred over several years, over a long period of time, and lived long enough that once enough stroke damage occurred, Alzheimer's began to happen in their brain as well. This brain slide is the effect of mixed dementia between Alzheimer's and vascular disease. The second form of dementia are dementias of the Alzheimer type, or DAT. Now remember, dementias are named for one of four reasons. They're named for the physician that found them. Alzheimer's is Dr. Alzheimer. Louie is Dr. Louie. Pick, Dr. Pick. Newman, Crutzfeld, Jacob, Barr, Huntington, Parkinson's. All are the names of physicians who found dementias. If you find it, you get to name it. Other dementias are telling you in their name what their cause is. The cause of vascular dementia is something vascular. Other dementias' names are telling you where the disease is in the brain. FTDs, frontal temporal dementias, are telling you the disease is in the frontal lobes and the temporal lobes. And some dementias are telling you in their name what is gonna be the re result of this form. Primary progressive aphasia, PPA. Its name means the primary course of this dementia, it's progressive, it only gets worse, is aphasia, the inability to use and understand language. So the name of the dementia is telling you where it is, who found it, what caused it, or what it's gonna do. Alzheimer's dementia is named for Dr. Alice Alzheimer. And in dementias of the Alzheimer's type, there are currently four subsets. The first subset is early onset Alzheimer's disease. This is considered a familial dementia. Now there are only 5,000 families in our country estimated to have early onset Alzheimer's, but early onset Alzheimer's easily gets confused at the doctor's office. What typically happens is the doctor will say your loved one is in the early stages of Alzheimer, which is saying how progressed the disease is on a staging tool, but by the time it gets home to the family it's become early onset Alzheimer's. Your 88-year-old grandfather cannot have early onset Alzheimer's. This is a disease that strikes preteens teens, 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, most people with early onset Alzheimer's disease die before the age of 65. This is not my 88-year-old grandmother and my 78-year-old mother. This is my 48-year-old grandmother, her brothers and sisters, my cousins, my aunts and uncles, my own siblings. This is multiple people in the family dying. These families are numbered at about 5,000 in our country, and research indicates that these families all have an origin from the same valley region of Germany where it's believed there must have been a genetic mutation. The second form of early onset Alzheimer's is the sporadic form. In this form, no one in your family has dementia and suddenly your 34-year-old sister is diagnosed with this. The second form of Alzheimer's is Down syndrome Alzheimer's. It is estimated that most people with Downs will die from this form of dementia. 
other dementias do not cause a change in personality per se. If you were a type A person, you're a type A person with dementia. If you were a type B person, you're a type B person with dementia. But in Down syndrome, we actually see a change in personality. The person with Downs becomes easily agitated. And in a unique twist of the disease, they don't stop doing their ADLs, they refuse to do their ADLs. So I say, Mark, you need to get out of bed, change out of your pajamas, and let's get ready for the day. And the response is no. Mark, you need to clean up your room. No. So it's a much different presentation. From the onset of this refusal to do ADLs to death is typically less than two years. The next form of Alzheimer's is the major form. This is regular onset Alzheimer's and there are many variations. This is people in their 60s and 70s who are showing symptoms of the disease and some re research indicates that if your loved one is in their 60s or 70s and showing the effects of Alzheimer's that the disease was actually present and active when they were in their 20s. It just took 40 years or more before it did enough damage to the brain that you and I could notice what had happened. There are multiple variations of regular onset Alzheimer's. Your person may or may not have paranoia. They may be highly suspicious. They may have greater anxiety features or greater depressive features. The next form of Alzheimer's disease is late onset Alzheimer's. This is primarily people in their 80s and 90s. If your loved one is above the age of 88, there are only three dementias left. Late onset Alzheimer's, vascular dementia of some form, or a mixture of late onset Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. If your loved one is over the age of 88, they have simply outlived any other dementia that it could be, and you're only left with these three. Late onset Alzheimer's appears to have two forms. In one form, on autopsy, the person's brain shows the clinical features and the death and destruction of the brain cell structure. In the secondary form, there doesn't appear to be as much damage, even though the behaviors were the same as the person who had tremendous damage in their brain. This is a slide of a person whose brain is normal, and the other side is the slide of the person whose brain has Alzheimer's disease. In the slide with Alzheimer's, Everywhere that you see a dark area on that slide, that is now fluid and no longer brain tissue. Your loved one's brain is shrinking and dying as a result of this disease. The next form of dementia is the vascular group. Now the vascular dementia could be caused by a number of things. Most often we think about strokes. Now strokes, there are different kinds of strokes. There are transient ischemic attacks. These are called TIAs or baby strokes, little strokes, tiny strokes, mini strokes, pinpoint strokes. The cumulative effect of these strokes is what is dangerous. It's not the single stroke itself. These are very minute blood clots that occur, but the body is able to clear them. And because they're so tiny, they don't clot or block blood flow to any area of the brain until it gets to a very tiny artery. So the area affected is only a small part of the brain. Ischemic attacks or ischemic strokes are much larger strokes. These are strokes that can happen and can move a person from aging normally and with one massive stroke, they can become demented in that moment because of the amount of brain damage that's done. The ischemic stroke is a much larger clot that is blocking a larger area of blood flow to the brain, hence the reason for the greater damage. Hemorrhagic strokes are another type of stroke, but in this stroke, we don't usually deal with these people in dementia simply because in a hemorrhagic stroke, the blood vessel has ruptured and the brain is flooded with blood and most people do not survive a hemorrhagic stroke. Other things that can cause you to lean towards a vascular dementia would be issues with blood pressure, either high blood pressure or low blood pressure, incidents with the heart, heart attacks, shunts, stents, valve surgery, heart replacement surgery, people that have a pacemaker, a defibrillator. People with histories of vascular conditions would lean you towards looking at a vascular form of dementia. Other forms include gray matter damage, white matter damage, meaning that the bundles of nerves that carry information to and from the brain have become compromised in some manner. There are dozens of forms of vascular dementia. For our African American and Hispanic American population, vascular dementia is considered to be the most dangerous and the most prevalent, and it is directly related to diet and exercise. Vascular dementia is the one that we can protect ourselves from. The same way we take statins to lower our cholesterol to keep us from having strokes means that we're also taking statins to protect our brain health. Knowing that vascular dementia exists gives us another reason to do diet and exercise to make sure that we do the best job possible 
helping our brain as it ages so that we don't develop a form of vascular dementia. The areas of white in this brain slide indicate areas of the brain that have been hit by a stroke. And in slide number A, you will see that the left temporal lobe has had a massive stroke in it, which would indicate that this person in talking to physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and everyone else is probably only left with curse words, forbidden words, and singing as a way to communicate. Everything the person with dementia is doing is directly related to the damage in their brain. The next form of dementias are the Lewy body set. Now Lewy bodies could be cortical Lewy bodies, it could be diffuse Lewy bodies. Both of those names are telling you slightly different areas in the brain where this disease begins. This disease is named for Dr. Lewy. And the Lewy body is a protein that should live in the fluid of the brain and instead it somehow pushes its way into the brain cell structure where it stays and eventually balloons, killing the brain cell. If the person has Lewy bodies first, we are looking for the onset of Parkinson's disease dementia. If they have Parkinson's disease dementia, we are watching for the onset of Lewy body. Lewy and Parkinson's are now considered first cousins of one another and we know that if we see one, we should watch for the other one. People with Lewy body are very sensitive to medications. They cannot have antipsychotic medication because antipsychotic medication interferes with dopamine and dopamine is already compromised in this brain. People with Lewy body are usually correctly identified once they're in a nursing home or a memory care community because the staff recognizes that these behaviors are not Alzheimer's behaviors. Lewy body people have very distinctive hallucination behavior which can help you describe to the doctor what they're doing and help the doctor move towards the correct diagnosis. The four hallucinations that we associate with Lewy bodies, the first hallucination is that they see children playing. So the second hallucination is they see bugs, spiders, rats, and snakes crawling on them and biting them. And bugs, spiders, rats, and snakes are things you and I are hardwired not to like. The third hallucination that they see is that they see people coming to get them. And they typically describe what sounds like a mask SWAT team or an army group. And sometimes in Lewy body, they know that one of their family members is part of this group that's trying to kill them. And that can mean that the family member can't come and visit. The fourth hallucination is that they see their caregiver or their spouse having sex with multiple people. And this hallucination is especially prevalent as the day goes on. Now, as you can imagine, if your spouse is seeing you having sex with multiple people, even though you're sitting right next to them, this is probably gonna cause some conflict at home. People with Lewy body tend to have depression set in much more rapidly than other forms of dementia. People with Lewy body have constipation that's not related to medication or diet. And people with Lewy bodies remember stiffen and fall face forward like a plank, striking their face when they hit. And they stiffen and fall backwards, striking the crown of their head. And remember that their falls are related to a chemical change in the brain that we don't understand that causes them to lose consciousness and that's the reason for their fall. This is a Lewy body brain, and these are various mutations of Lewy body. The Lewy bodies themselves are those very dark circles that you see in the brain tissue. Frontal temporal dementias are called the FTDs. The name of this dementia is telling you that the disease is happening in the frontal lobes and the temporal lobes, and where exactly it is in those lobes determines whether it is the behavioral group the communication group, or the movement disorder group. As these dementias progress, there is less and less emotion in your loved one. And the reason for that is that emotion is in the frontal lobes, and the frontal lobes are being destroyed in these diseases. As the disease progresses in the behavioral and communication groups, they begin to bend forward at the waist and try to continue to ambulate. Because of how they are bent and out of balance, this is the group that has the highest numbers of falls as the disease progresses. They will not keep helmets on, and you can't stop them from moving. The ones with the movement disorder FTDs are people that are typically going to be cared for in nursing home settings because nursing homes have the lifts and the equipment and the people to be able to lift and move and manage this form of dementia. These are very aggressive dementias, and the rule of thumb is that if the person is younger than the age of 60 and showing with trouble in cognition, it means that we should be thinking about FTD dementias not Alzheimer's dementias. 
So frontal temporal dementias are considered a younger person's dementia because they strike people in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, and their 50s, with their 50s being the largest group. Most of this group has died by their mid-60s. This is the brain of a person with behavioral variant FTD. And as you look at this brain, you can see that they are missing their frontal lobe. A great deal of their temporal lobes are gone. There is tremendous damage in their parietal lobe. And their occipital lobe actually has holes in it. Everything your loved one is doing is directly related to what is happening in their brain. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're looking at a person with Alzheimer's disease, they don't know who, what, where, when, why, or how, but they have all of the emotions. If you're talking to a person with FTD, they do know who, what, where, when, why, or how, but they have none of the emotions. They know they're in a nursing home, they simply don't care. They may know their family doesn't visit them, but they simply don't care because that piece of the brain no longer exists. The next dementia is Parkinson's disease dementia. 80% of the people with Parkinson's will develop Parkinson's disease dementia. The later in life you are when you are diagnosed with Parkinson's, the more rapidly the Parkinson's will become Parkinson's disease dementia. 20% of people with Parkinson's don't develop into dementia, and it's because they die before the dementia begins. Remember that if the person has Parkinson's, you're watching for Lewy body. If the person has Lewy bodies, you're watching for the onset of Parkinson's. It is not unusual that your loved one will have both of these dementias. The next dementia is Wernicke-Korsakoff. This is called alcohol dementia, and this takes dedicated drinking. This is not I had a beer on a Sunday. This is I had a case of beer and a bottle of something every day for decades. The result of drinking is that alcohol is technically called neurotoxin, meaning brain poison, and the brain cannot produce or use thiamine as a result of the drinking, and it is the lack of thiamine which causes this dementia to develop. This person tends to be more impulsive and more easily agitated. And one-fifth of the people who have Wernicke-Korsakoff, we believe, will smear feces. It is estimated that one-fifth of the people who have Wernicke-Korsakoff's dementia will smear feces, so be aware that this is part of the disease process and not somebody trying to make your care harder. The next dementia is the Huntington's group. There is juvenile Huntington's, Huntington's dementia, and Huntington's chorea. Chorea means jerking. So this is a tremor, but this is jerking, and it means that all of the limbs are moving in this manner. This is a very aggressive form of dementia. This dementia is passed through the family line. If the children don't show symptoms prior to the age of 18, at the age of 18 they are allowed to be tested to see if they have it. There's a one in two chance that they will. This has a very high, highly successful suicide rate because this person knows the parent that they got the dementia from, and if the parent showed symptoms at 35 and died at 40, that is very much their own trajectory. This group has the highest and most successful suicide rate. The ninth form of dementia is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or commonly called football dementia. This dementia occurs because of the hits that the head suffers during the game. It has been known that the head bounces back and forth due to the impact of the hit, but it is now understood the brain is also shearing at the brain stem because of this damage. There are currently two forms, early onset and late onset. Early onset is men between the ages of 16 and 36. There are four subsets, an aggressive form, a behavioral form, a communication form, and a movement form. In the late onset, this is men in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. There are also these same four sets, the aggressive form, a communication form, a movement form, and a mixture of all of the above. Obviously, there is a third set coming that will be men in their middle ages, but as of yet, that distinction has not been made.